book you say is quite interesting because one of is one of the best uh, landscape photographer. And uh, I mean, just in the corner, I'm not right, but he doesn't use at all any technique for retouching photographs. This is real color, and it's done by the chamber. And he tried. We discuss a lot. He tried the most expensive chamber, numeric digital chamber, but he cannot achieve to get this quality. So whatever. There is another question, is the shooting on one part, and on the second part, what he's doing now is uh, they try with uh, Picto Lab, Lab, which is one of the most famous for professional and artist photographer. They try to pass from the printing wipe out one by one, because one by one, it takes hours to get this kind of print right. So they try to scan and to make um, digital files that they could use as a reproduction, like, you know, they fix the file and then after it's better. Nevertheless, whenever the printer uses uh, machines, he has to make control very strict to get those kind of photos. So it's not so easy. He ha and Thibault told me that this year he used this uh, digital chamber, but it was not satisfied at the quality. And of course, those are print as a lambda technique, but on C print. This is Japan, whatever. So this is all done traditionally. Paul Graham is the most traditional photographer in one way, because Paul, I would say, was one of the creative, uh, for this kind of movement we call objective photography. And I think now he's using numeric, but for him it doesn't make any change. The only thing is like, with like a lot of artists, he have super three big large screen, and he can look at this photo quite differently than before, and then print it in any size he like. So we were talking about Tigo Cuisse, and this is Shai Kramer. This is an American Israeli guy who used numeric numeric digital camera and lambda. So very, you will see it's quite the same than Thibaut Cusse, but it's not, it's much more romantic. The colors are absolutely different. But the rendu, the, the effect of the image is quite different. I mean, you have to see the print, you know. It. <coughs> and so I will go for, this is a very good example, is Corinne Mercadier. Corinne Mercadier is a French artist, and she always used a very special technique because she had a kind of specific writing. She used Leica normally, and she was reshooting a pop, uh, the, she would print the, the picture and then reshoot it with a Polaroid, and then print the Polaroid on projection <coughs> wherever. This is a, um, a color photography print. Even is a film at the origin is black and white. And all of this was given this specific writing, but then Polaroid disappeared then she couldn't project anymore. The Polaroid has a positive towards Polaroid, whatever, ribbon and paper. So she had to go through different uh, techniques. So she tried many techniques. And then at the end, she realized that the color paper was the best way to get back this kind of effect. And then she tried to do Photoshop. She tried uh, whatever, the Lambda, the, the digital printer. She used, she try everything, but then she have to stop it and find another way of working. So that's still a regular <coughs> technique for her. And now she's doing this kind of photo. So it's like absolutely real, no Photoshop, nothing. I mean, only this kind of black screen on the top of the photo. And you realize that it changed totally her uh, way of expressing herself. And at the same time, I, don't have, I, I think I don't have the, the visual of the other part of the work she's doing now. But on the other part, she's doing negative photos that she, ex, that she retouch and redrawing by Photoshop. And give exactly the reverse of that. So this you will see next year. She's working on that since three years. And it's a very slow process for an artist to change the police language. Her language, sorry. And I will say that I put two very traditional photographers 
a very young one, Noah Eno, and you can see that it's totally standard photography. And I will say to <coughs> something which is very important to say, I mean, one of my friends is directing the article section for photography uh, in Paris, and it's one of the major schools for photography. Of course, we have all, but most of the Buzar school doesn't have really like uh, sustained tools and techniques. And guess what? This year, he closed uh, uh, the color print lab that they supposed to use. Though I know is one of the now rare young artists who use, who is able to print herself a uh, photography. And actually, she's so precious on that that she rather print herself and use a lot. But so, for me, all the professionals I've been working with were excellent on printing and uh, able to talk with a printer, as you were saying before. And now, the fact to use digital to make many photos it's a problem. I mean, this photo was done at 5 o'clock in the morning with a very new model who didn't know about her. And so the process is quite different and the quality of the photo is excellent. And I don't think you will find that so easily in your photographer today. But it is. So it's almost traditional. And I will finish with the most young artist I have is uh, over 80 years old. He <laughs> has been working since he's 65 and he's making a world turn all over the place. And Jim Gagatsan is using like a maquette with scotch, uh, scotch, you know, tape, sorry, um, little drawing. I mean, he worked in a cabinet near Marseille with two <coughs> gardeners and what he's doing, he sketches for the first and he shoots himself in the position that he can cut out his silhouette, put his silhouette in this kind of market and make a photo. And actually we had some problem with Jibia because he's getting, of course, old and he had problems to cut perfectly the layout. So I would say, with a note line, that we did ask uh, a lot to retouch a little bit the photo, but it didn't work. It didn't work, so we still have his printer, which is old as he is, who retouch each photography one by one. So to get this classical effect and this marvelous way of doing it, and everybody is thinking his Photoshop. So that's the collector. Well, that's it. Christine has to go in a minute, in fact, because she's talking about the train. So it's just one question I want to ask you. Um, yeah. I spoke recently to Agnes de Sillion Pour, I can never pronounce the name. Agnes de Sillion Pour. Thank you. <laughs> who is the recently retired head of the uh, French yeah. Museum of Culture? Who are the biggest buyers of photography? One of the things she's told me is it's <laughs> unlikely in the future that they will accept secrets because of the archival issue. Yeah. Have you anything to say about that? Because that, to me, is, as a bit of news for a photographer, is very dramatic. Well, as I said, there is a, a total difference between the problematic of uh, archival and the way of promoting photography and the sensitivity of it. But I think what I saw today and on those weekends, I think solved the problem because the quality really is near, near, near what is the secret. So I think the professor can do on that now. There's no problem with the public. And I'm happy with that. And I'm very happy that I saw it. Okay, great. So do you think you have to persuade the photographers to do that? If, if, if you want to continue yourself to the French Ministry of Culture, for example, who must no. be one of your biggest potential clients? Uh, Agnes was a very big client to me, but uh, I think it will take the time. I mean, in it's so. because the lab are starting secret anyway. I mean, more or less, it's less and less possible to print. Like, you know, I was talking about calling mechanism paper, it is a very, the technique has disappeared. So whatever we do, we, we are obliged to continue that way. And now I think it's just in fact, and five years ago, I would not have done that. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for coming.